All right. Let's do this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another casting game. And you can see here, we are getting follower alerts. What does that mean? It means that I am back on Twitch, ladies and gentlemen. I've been on YouTube streaming for a couple of months. And um, there's a few things, reservations that I have with it. And it was just getting a little too annoying for me. Various things. So we are back on Twitch. And hopefully all is going to be well. So welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live right now. And um, this is looking at a very interesting change to Malta. And this was sent through by Sir Callan. He's been on, he's been sort of, you know, uh, showcased various times. And he is called Special Agent Jack Decker. And we're going to be looking at a car that has recently been moved to age two. And that is called, called the Dreddin Towers. And um, there's a little bit of backstory to the Dreddin Towers card. And the risotto put it in chat. It says, the Dreddin Towers are a series of small coastal watchtowers built in Malta by the Order of St. John between 1658 and 1659. Thirteen towers were built around the coast of mainland Malta, eight of which still survive. There we go, some interesting history there. So, we're going to be seeing this in action, and it is this card right here. And what it does is it ships two outpost wagons. Okay, fine. However, you can now train Maltese infantry from them. So basically... It's it's a barracks. It's basically two um, blockhouses from Russia. We're talking about two blockhouses that you can get. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, what I found interesting, actually, is the Maltese artillery and ships reduce in HP the more cards you ship. I didn't even know that. I don't know if I caught that on the patch, patch notes. This is not the Flamethrower Tower card. No, that is the Fire Towers card. I believe that's what you're talking about. Yes. By the way, let me know. Um, yes. Let me know if the game sounds are too loud. Um, I am very sort of, you know, worried about that. But anyway, let's have a look at the, our opponent here. So Callan's opponent is good old Keys Cashel. I've also showcased him, I think, a few times, uh, and he is playing the United States. And this is age two TP time. So we can already see that he's opened up with two TPs, and he's mainly done that from the good old Chinese immigrants which allows you to keep shipping rickshaws, which is kind of insane. And we can now see it's going for capitalism, which is a nice coin trickle. So hopefully you're going to be seeing maybe a fast fortress here. That's the feeling I'm getting from Keys Cashel. And uh, let's go back to good old Callan here. Ready. And yes, we do see... Uh, I'm just going to turn this down a little bit for me, I think. Is it? it does seem a little bit loud to me, but maybe it's just me. So let me know, guys. Always let me know the sound levels and all that good stuff. Right. Callan, going for the quartermaster. 400 wood is coming in. What is he doing in transition? He's got all vills over to wood. And pretty easy. This is called underrated, this deck, by the way. And other things that are kind of unusual in this deck, there's not many. I mean, the Duredin Towers is kind of the one, isn't it? And let's see how that works. So Keys Cashel here is actually going to be grabbing a third TP here. Very, very greedy. And um, we do now see the Pennsylvania age up. And look at this. We've got tons of vills on coin. That is for the Dutch immigrants. So he's going to have not only the capitalism coin trickle. He's going to have the bank trickle. And no doubt he might go for the Hamiltonian economics as well. That's quite a nice card to go for. Alrighty, let's have a quick look at Special Agent Jack Decker. He is slightly behind here on the age up compared to Keys Cashel. And now he is going for the German tongue. So this has had a reduction, a wood reduction, I believe. Oh, wait, no, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the uh, USA. Ignore me. It has not had a wood reduction. That is for the USA, I believe. And uh, yeah, he has chopped wood basically to get that. So he's going to get two settler wagons and a commandery wagon. And he's going to be able to train a further four settlers. Four settler wagons, that is. For his eco. So I think his first card is going to be... It makes sense for it to be the Dereddin Towers, but he is going to lose a bit of eco. He's not going to be able to go for Wigner Court first, which is quite a standard one. Um, he's not going to be able to do that. But we do see the commandery wagon. And I see what he's doing here. He's going to stick a commandery wagon, and then he's going to go 
for the two towers to also guard that. He's going to basically have three outposts worth of damage. It's going to be crazy. Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gents. So what do we see? We do see a satellite wagon coming in, of course. And immediately we're going to see the Dreading Towers. Here we go, ladies and gents. Boom, there they are. And I think they're just going to be normal outposts. I don't know whether they're going to be special outposts. I think they're just normal. Yeah, but they are going to be able to now train units, your pike, your bows, all of that stuff. And uh, now the commander is actually just going to take this hunt. That's quite nice because now you start to get a bit of map control. Now look, what do we see? We see the outposts are training pike and bow. Just standard kind of mortar stuff now. And immediately now coming in with the Wigner Court. So... Now we're starting to get our eco in behind what we're doing here. And it's so good, this card, because it saves you 200 wood. Um, and also, you have two outposts as well. And you can just garrison villages in them. They're just like normal. It's, um, yeah, just super barracks. It's kind of crazy. And I don't know whether it's all... Is it even further outposts now? Um, yeah. So you could just build other outposts. And that, that's your go-to barracks now. You know, don't worry about... There's no need to build normal barracks. Just build an outpost. And that's your new barracks. It's kind of crazy. And we do now see pretty much like the macro is just food and wood. It's very mortar-like. There's nothing kind of crazy to it. We do see uh, a few market upgrades coming in. And uh, what is Keys Cashel's vision here? What does he even know? He doesn't even know. He can see that the hunt is now moving around. But he has no idea. I mean, he's sieging... I mean, his TP is getting sieged, but he has no idea. And of course, as I mentioned, what do we see? We do see an age up coming on. And he did go for, what did I say? Hamiltonian Economics and then the Virginia General Assembly. So yeah, he's pretty much in full kind of fast fortress swing here. And we're going to have to see how Callan deals with this. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure if I look at his vision, he doesn't actually have any idea of what Keys is actually doing here. He, he might already have a pretty decent idea of what he's expecting, but we don't see. No, the negative HP is not a bug. No, it's not a bug. It's not a bug. Um, we do, yeah, basically it reduces artillery and ships. So it's a slight nerf to basically like, you know, the, um, the fixed gun, I think. It might actually affect the fixed gun, even though it's a building. And it is an artillery piece, but it's not a unit. It's not mobile. Um, we do now see Keys has got into the Fortress Age here. And now what do we see? Something interesting, a switch up in macro. We see double Sentinels now coming out. We have eight Sentinels on the battlefield for Callan here. Quite an interesting move. Not going for Bow and Pike, which is kind of strange. I thought Bow and Pike would be quite nice rather than Sentinels. I'm not too sure the power of Sentinels. I guess because you can... You can go back into range here. Look at the range of the outposts. And now look, the minute they're under the outpost, boom. They've got these insane buffs now. You see? So the outposts are quite nice. You could actually split these outposts a bit more and get more kind of coverage for your sentinels. So it does make sense to actually have a few sentinels for yourself. And also now, Silversmith is an interesting one because that's going to just improve the coin gathering for the sentinels as well so that's quite nice i like that I mean, you can see the change look at the change when they get into range boom they get like 25 percent uh sorry sorry 25 more hp they get more damage and i think they get slightly more movement speed as well so it's kind of crazy and we do now see yet yeah, more tps coming down uh, you know, yeah, Callan's on it. We do now see a very, very nice card from USA, Russian-American company. Fantastic card. Two block houses, and it increases your gather rate on food. It's kind of insane. Uh, how did he get this factory? Did he age up with that? No, he didn't. No, he went for the New Hampshire manufacturing. Wow. So he's got a factory producing 5.5 wood, which is pretty much like... Six villagers. Six villagers on wood. It's kind of insane. And now we do see there was an outpost on this side. Unfortunately, that is going to be thwarted there by Keys. So that's going to be going down. Nothing he can really do there. 
And uh, what is... We do. Are we seeing an age up potentially here? I'm feeling like we could age up, especially with Silversmith. We're going to have that really sort of fast injection of coin, which we are seeing. Look at the coin rolling in. It's kind of insane. And now he's going to be able to age up. And he's yes, he's going for the hospitality. That's age up is faster and also improvements for your infantry. Uh, this is kind of insane. I remember when that factory was free. Good times. I mean, that's an absolute joke. You got to admit, line. That's got to be a joke. That's basically an age four card in age three. It makes sense that it does cost a bit of wood. I think. I don't think you can dispute that. Surely not. Surely you're not going to dispute it. Okay. So what do we see? Fast age up coming in now for Callan. He's going with the bishop. I'm a comedian, so of course. <laughs> uh, we see all these sentinels. This is an interesting play. I I like it. I like it. It's a very kind of. It's, it's, it's kind of like a rush, but the outposts are so goddamn good because, like, luckily, you know, Callan is getting um, sort of put off here by putting these outposts, but you could surround your opponent with these outposts. We're seeing it now, and it, and it means that Callan has these buffed sentinels all around Keyes' base, uh, which is going to cause a problem. And what do we see now? We do see the covered wagon coming in. That's with the age up and a further hospital here coming in that's going to help also uh, we need to get the upgrades i don't think you can actually get the upgrades from the outpost so you can only train units from it so it's not a it, like a whole kind of barracks but you just need to build one barracks i guess um yeah and we're seeing like he's just everywhere he's surrounding keys here we do now see the main force of keys three gatlins behind here a few sharpshooters going to be pushing forward is he going to be able to get the hospital down before the upgrade comes in, unfortunately not. So that's going to be nice for Callan here and immediately just going to continue with some Sentinels. What his, is his answer here to the Gatling guns? We do see Sovereign Order of Malta here. So he's going to be getting further improvements to his units. And he's got to really come back here and protect his TC. He 100% needs to do it. However, he's going to continue here. Going to be finding... What is that? That's three settlers. Absolutely fantastic. Is he going to see it? Yes, he is. He's going back for them. He's after them. He's after them. Uh, this TC is going to be going down. Nothing he can really do. He probably needs... Um, he's actually gathered a lot of wood, to be honest. Uh, he probably just needs some culverins. Um, unfortunately was unable there but he is now pushing in on from the north side here what do we see we see the ulan shipment coming from keys here so that is the good old Pulaski's legion very very powerful ulan shipment here that you have to use wood for and uh, yeah Callan kind of really spread out all over the map a lot of mini engagements going on here this outpost is unfortunately now going to go down and um a lot of sharpshooters coming in for keys now to try and deal with these sentinels. And still, Callan is just on pure sentinels, ladies and gents. Pure sentinels. And he has a card available. What is he going to go for here? What is he going to be doing, ladies and gents? We see two batches of sentinels. He has got an outpost now on the north side of Keys' base. And he's also still got this one as well, like on the northwest side. Uh, which is quite nice. We do see nine sentinels coming in. And main mass are going to be moving behind here. And we do now see... Going to try and just beeline it for the factory here. Is he going to be able to get this down? I'm not too sure. Yeah, these uh, these sharpshooters are going to make short work of them. So they definitely need to just get out of there. Is probably the best thing. We might be seeing a raid here from Keys. Potentially, he's got his cav in the corner there. Could he be advancing north? He's got his Gatlins just kind of sitting around on their own here. I think he's trying to deal with this. Oh my god, I didn't even see how many Vils are here. That would have been a juicy, juicy raid, but unfortunately it did not happen. And hang on a minute, is Callan going age four? Is he doing it? Is he doing it, ladies and gents? What is your command? Key's now shipping pretty much everything and uh, everything and everything that's that's not the saying is it what the bloody hell's the saying anything and everything i think is the saying I'm ready. 
24 sharpshooters, four Gatlins. He's also got his Ulans. He's got his carbine. He's got a lot of stuff, ladies and gents. He has got a lot of stuff indeed. Let's have a quick look at Keys. Uh, sorry, not Keys. Callan. Yes, he is going H4. He's going for the Pope. Now, honestly, I wouldn't see the benefit of going H4 here. What has he got that he could try and deal with here? He, he could ship two fixed guns and then go heavy fortifications. That might be quite nice. Um, he's got the Spanish tongue card. But yeah, this is um, he is a little bit on the back foot at the moment. Going to be starting to lose that map control. And he's going to continue trying to build outposts. We can see a couple of them going down here. I guess the fortifications make sense. Because it just helps your outposts. Uh, they're even more tanky. They obviously are now producing military. So it makes sense. Is he going to spot... Is he going to go down here and, and, and find this outpost? There is the outpost. Wow. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> that sounded amazing. So I think we've got some... Uh, we've got some mountain troopers... I believe, uh, being spawned. Oh my god, a couple of villagers going down here. Um, oh wait, no, he's got the march here. Yes, he's got um, spawns more magia the longer you wait. I, I don't know what's going on. There's just so many different things. There the mountain troopers are. We've got four mountain troopers. There they are, ladies and gents. Um, Keys is now going to be going for the buffalo soldiers. The vet carbine, and he himself is now going to be going age four. And what do we see? We see the scary flintlock rockets, of course. I completely forgot about this. Grants your sentinels a powerful charged rocket launcher attack and significantly increases their combat stats, but also makes them more expensive. Yes, definitely more expensive. But, um, wow. There they are. They are in. They are scary. Watch out. They've got insane siege. They've got the battle bluster attack. 37 damage. And it also has an area effect here. The only downside is the range of it is not amazing. So he's going to need something to deal with these sharpshooters, I think. Unless unless the siege damage can do enough. Um, I'm not entirely sure. We're going to have to see. Sharpshooters are going to be pushing. There it is. There's the upgrade, which is really, really nice to see. Um, he's actually gone for the flame upgrade. There it is. The flame upgrade doing some work against these sharpshooters. Hasn't got the range, I don't think, to get to get these, is it? Unfortunately not. There we go. Lots of different Maltese cards being used here. I'm hearing some more rockets. There it is. Absolutely beautiful. Look at them. Oh, look at that. You are so lame. <laughs> oh, no. Every game with you. Oh, no. Every fucking game with you. Oh no. We love you. We love we both we love both of you guys. Come on. I know it's frustrating, but I love Callan's kind of um creativeness with with like the the meta crafting that he has is kind of crazy how he comes up with these um yeah, comments like that just feed the beast. They feed Callan so much. However, this uh raid's going to be very nice. Uh that's going to be seven villagers. Six fills and a settler wagon. They're all going to be going down. That's quite nice. Um, however, they are now just walking, beelining straight for the TC here. Ooh, I love the animation. It's just kind of crazy. I love the way they look as well. Can we just talk about how the Sentinels look? Can we talk about that? Look how, look how amazing they are. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, and there is the GG, ladies and gents. You saw it here. Um, let's have a look at how much the Sentinels now cost. 87 food and 58 coin. That still isn't that much for, like, what you get. I still think that's very, very good. The man's an artist. He is indeed. He's like just some kind of uh, minimalist kind of artist, isn't he? I find. Like, not a lot of people see it. Not a lot of people understand it. But then there are those sort of connoisseurs that really, truly understand like how good it is, you know. And there we go, guys. First casted game back on Switch. Thanks. Let's have a quick look at the post game. I know you always want to have a look. Economy, we can see. Look at that, thirty-four to twenty-seven. Um, and we can also have a look. 
just the resources gathered there as well. So coming in for an age up around 11 minutes, opposed to Keyes' uh, fast fortress here that he did. Uh, but still quite close to Callan, given that he went for a fast fortress. It does show you, even like the United States with a fast fortress, with a fast fortress, you generally sacrifice economy. But, you know, this, the United States can still keep up because of, you know, their coin trickle, the bank, the Hamiltonian economics... The factory you can get out in age three, the double blockhouse with the with the hunting upgrade. There's it's just nuts. I still think United States are pretty darn good.